The history of body armor stretches back thousands of years, but it's been during the last 100 years that the most significant innovations in that area have occurred. Here's five things you don't know about body armor. During the First World War, practically every participating nation conducted experiments in body armor. In the United States, we tested our first successful pattern called Brewster body armor in 1917. Invented by Dr. Guy Otis Brewster of Dover, New Jersey, the system consisted of a breastplate and a headpiece made of chrome nickel steel that was capable of stopping the bullet from a Lewis light machine gun traveling 2,750 feet per second. But despite its ability to stop a bullet, it was far too cumbersome and therefore far too impractical for use in the field. An unfortunate fact, because the vast majority of wounds suffered by soldiers of the First World War were fragmentation wounds to the head and to the chest. And according to a British survey published late in the war, three quarters of those wounds could have been prevented had a successful body armor system been widely available. One of the more bizarre body armor innovations of the First World War was the Creeper tank. These were also known as mobile personal shields, and they were designed to protect the soldier from rifle and small arms fire, as well as break the stalemated immobility of trench warfare. Well, like Dr. Brewster's armor, the Creeper tanks were far too heavy and cumbersome for practical use. The flak jacket was developed during the Second World War to protect Royal Air Force air crewmen from the tiny bits of flying metal that were being tossed around in the sky by exploding German anti-aircraft shells. In fact, the term flak originates from the compound German word Flugzeuge Abwehrkanon, which simply means anti-aircraft gun. The RAF subsequently shared their flak jackets with the U.S. Army, and so U.S. Army 8th Air Force air crewmen made use of them through the end of the Second World War, but as a limited issue item. In the aftermath of World War II, the flak jacket continued through phases of development, leading ultimately to flak jackets being distributed broadly during the Korean War and then during Vietnam. But the flak jackets being worn by U.S. troops in Vietnam were capable only of stopping the fragmentation from hand grenades, mortars, and artillery. They were not capable of stopping a bullet. It wasn't until the introduction of Kevlar in the early 1970s that you see the actual introduction of a true bulletproof vest. One thing that visually characterizes troops fighting in the global war on terror are rigs like you see the one I'm wearing right now. A rig that allows for the insert of what they call SAPI plates. That stands for Small Arms Protective Insert. And these are Kevlar plates, one being worn in the front, one being worn in the back. Plates that will stop a 7.62 by 39 millimeter bullet from an AK-47 fired from as close away as 10 feet. One of the most dramatic examples of the protective power afforded by SAPI plates was captured on film in July 2005 when Private First Class Stephen Chitter was standing outside his Humvee in Baghdad. Targeted by insurgent snipers, Private Chitter was shot directly in the chest. But thanks to his Kevlar SAPI plates, the bullet stopped short of his heart and he was able to get right back up unharmed. So, from sniper rifles to AK-47s, this gear, this body armor, makes being struck by small arms fire at close range survivable. Uh, you know, get, get really close to them, right? Come in out and uh, 
The next generation of military body armor is currently under development, and rather than focusing solely on protection, it incorporates new advances and enhanced physical capabilities. Researchers at the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency and Harvard University are currently developing a biologically inspired lightweight smart suit called Warrior Web. Using a system that mimics the actions of muscles and tendons, Warrior Web allows a soldier to walk farther and to carry a heavier load without becoming fatigued. Fully operational suits that combine these capabilities with effective ballistics protection are expected to be ready by 2018. So it was the First World War that triggered the development of modern body armor. Ironically, the event that triggered the First World War, the assassination of Archduke Francis Ferdinand in Sarajevo in June of 1914, occurred while the Archduke was wearing a silken protective vest. But that vest did not save his life. Do you know why? If so, post your answer online or reach out to us using Twitter through hashtag 5ThingsYouDon'tKnow.